Friday, there is an hour during which Allah will accept the supplications of every slave who invokes Him. It is also called Yom al Mazid among us angels. The Prophet said, uh, O Jibreel, what is this, this day? And uh, literally, the day means the day of morn. Jibreel said, Allah has chosen a vast valley in paradise that has a hill made of musk. When it is Friday, Allah sends down whomever He wants of His angels. Around these angels are platforms made of light that carry the seats of the Prophet ﷺ. Or the Prophets ﷺ. Around these platforms, there are other platforms made of gold and beautified by precious stones. Where the truthful ones and the martyrs sit behind the Prophets on that hill. Allah declares, I am your Lord, I, I have fulfilled my promise to you. Therefore ask me and I will grant you. They say, O oh, our Lord, we ask for your pleasure. And Allah says, I have granted you my pleasure and you will have whatever you wish. I also have Mazid more including gazing at his face. So you can see at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they anticipate the coming of Friday in eagerness for what their Lord grants them during, during it of all that is good and righteous. Furthermore, the Prophet Muhammad says, Allah says, every Muslim who dies on Friday or during its night from the fitna of the grave. So we uh, as Muslims should preserve um, Jum'ah and uh, follow all of its requirement, requirements so that we can attain paradise. Furthermore, uh, one of the first sermons that the Prophet Muhammad did in Mecca, the Prophet Muhammad we know what, what the Prophet Muhammad said, uh, did. He went to Mecca and, and he was preaching to the people of Mecca. So the first speech, the first sermon uh, in Mecca, the Prophet Muhammad says, Verily, one who uh, ar ar verily does not lie to his people. One whom his people sent to search for water and grass. That's, that's, the, that's the word in Arabic. But Allah, even if I lied to all people, I would never lie to you. And if I deceived all people, I would never deceive you. But Allah, other than whom there is no deity worthy of worship, I am Allah's messenger to you in particular and to all people in general. By Allah, you will die just as easy as you sleep and you will be resurrected just as easy as you wake up from sleep. And you will, and you will be resurrected just as easy as you wake up from sleep. You will be recompensed, meaning you will be paid back on account of what you did, earning good for good and evil for evil. Verily, it is either paradise for eternity or the fire for eternity. And so, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, then said to the Prophet Muhammad this speech from the Prophet ﷺ, including announcing his prophet prophethood and calling his people to Islam. After that, Allah the exalted the most honorable revealed this ayah. And say, O Muhammad, I am indeed a plain warner. And so therefore proclaim openly the monotheism of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and which you are commanded and turn away from al-mushrikeen, the polytheists, the idolaters and disbelievers. And then further he says, and warn your tribe of near kindred and be kind and humble to the believers who follow you. And so then Prophet Muhammad mounted the, 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 mount, the mountain in Safa in Mecca and declared with the loudest voice. He said, Wa sabah, sabaha, meaning all oh, oh, the people, uh, which is a cry to the Arabs, used to herald when an eminent danger is about to encompass their people or tribe. He started saying the different names of the of the tribes. He said, oh, Bani, Fafih, Bani Ali, Bani Aqab, all the, all the different tribes, mentioning them uh, individually by name. And so once they gathered, he said to them, what if I told you that there are horsemen in the valley about to attack you, would you believe me? And they said, yes, we will believe you. We only experience the truth from you. The Prophet said that I am a warner for you of the coming of a severe torment. And so when they heard the, the message of, the, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that, that Allah had given the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they, um, uh, Abu Lahab, they, and of course Abu Lahab, they, uh, they made fun of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and of course they said, why would, uh, for just a, a message like this, you have gathered us? And so Abu Lahab said, perish you, O Muhammad, is this why you gathered us here? And then the, uh, the, uh, another ayah came, and the ayah says, perish the hands of Abu Lahab and perish he. So after that, the Prophet, uh, after that, the Prophet Muhammad of course started preaching Islam. And in another sermon, the Prophet uh, he reminds his people of Allah and calls upon them to love each other and love Him for for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Ibn Isaq says the Messenger of Allah gave another speech in which he said, "All thanks are due to Allah. I thank Him and seek His aid." 
We seek refuge with Allah from the evils within ourselves and the burden of our evil deeds. He whom Allah guides will never be misled and he whom, mis he, whom he misguides will never find um, one to guide him. So if Allah wants to guide you, He will guide you. And if He does not want to guide you, you will of course be misled uh, for the rest of your life. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, alone without partners. Verily the best speech is the book of Allah, the exalted. He in whose heart the Quran is made beautiful and in an account enter, entered Islam after being a disbeliever. He, who chose the Quran above the speech of Allah of all people has indeed attained success. Who chose Quran above the speech of all people has indeed attained success. The Quran is the best and most eloquent speech there is. Love those who love Allah and love Allah from the bottom of your hearts. Do not, do not get bored with Allah's speech or remembering Him, nor, nor allow your hearts to grow hard towards it. Worship Allah, associate none with Him, and worship Him in fear, and fear Him as He should be fair. Let your tongue say the truth for Allah's sake and love each other on the guidance of Allah's love. Verily Allah becomes angry if His covenant is broken. May Allah's peace and blessings and mercy be upon you. Lastly, another speech the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, delivers in Mena. And you can see in each speech he talks about the, 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 the monotheism uh, of Islam, uh, the belief in, uh, in one Allah, the belief in Tawheed, that uh, there, there's only one Allah and that there is no uh, other gods besides Him. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, speech in Mena, he says, May Allah give radiance to a slave who heard my speech, memorized it, and delivered it to whoever did not hear it. Verily, there might be one who delivers information even though he does not fully understand it himself. There might be one who delivers information to one who understands it better than he does. Three qualities will not cause the Muslim to be cheated on their account. Performing deeds in sincerity with Allah, giving sincere advice to the Muslim leaders and adhering by their jama'ah, meaning the, the, a group of uh, Muslims or the companions who were following the uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Verily, the invocation of the leaders encompasses all those behind him. He's talking about the Imam, the, the Muslim leaders. And another uh, narration, of course, says, Verily, the, there, the Jama'at, Jama'at's invo invocation is behind him, the leader. He whose dedication is to, ma is to matters of the hereafter, then Allah will gather his strength for him and make his wealth in his heart. Hence, this life will rush to him with submission. As for he whose concern is this life, then Allah will dissolve his strength and make his poverty apparent between his eyes. He will only collect from this life what has been written for him. So we can see uh, the Prophet Muhammad talks about uh, per performing uh, acts of worship and believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's what we're here for. We're here, of course, we're here to live, but also... Uh, our entire lives we should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, inshallah, in the next one, uh, well, there's uh, another two sermons that I'd like to, uh, uh, I'd like to uh, talk to you about, inshallah. Lastly, the Prophet Muhammad speech uh, about enjoying good and forbidding evil. It says Ibn Umar anhu, he narrates the Prophet Muhammad said, O people, enjoy righteousness and forbid evil before a time comes when you invoke Allah, when you ask for Allah, but He will not accept your invocation and He will seek His forgiveness, but He will not forgive you. Verily, enjoying righteousness does not shorten your life. Verily, when the Jew Jewish rabbis and Christian monks Abandoned in joining, in joining righteousness and forbidding evil, Allah cursed them by the words of their prophets and surrounded them with affliction. The Prophet Muhammad further talks about discouraging, uh, liking this life. O people, this life is the dwelling of crookedness, not straightness. This life is the dwelling of crookedness, not straightness, and the residence of sadness rather than happiness. Those who acquire knowledge in its true re reality will not feel joy in times of ease, nor grieve in times of hardship. Those who acquire knowledge in its true reality will not feel joy in times of uh, ease, nor grieve in times of hardship. Verily, Allah the Exalted has created this life as a test, and the hereafter as the dwelling of recompense. He made the test of this life a reason behind earning the reward of the hereafter, and the reward in the hereafter as a compensation for the test in this life. 
He takes so that he gives and tests so that he recompenses. The life of this world vanishes rapidly and changes suddenly. Therefore beware of its sweetness as to avoid the bitterness of its depriving and beware of its delight so as to avoid the pains they lead to. Do not excessively build a life that Allah has decided is bound to destruction and do not recline to or like it. Verily Allah has ordained on you that you should avoid its dangers otherwise you will expose yourself to his anger and justifi justifiably earn his punishment. Lastly the Prophet Muhammad talks about uh, the, the knowledge of uh, the earth, learning of knowledge, the learning of uh, the knowledge of deen. The Prophet Muhammad says, the learn al ilm for learning it is type of uh, khashya, fear of Allah. Seeking it is an act of worship. Studying is a, uh, studying it is a type of tasbih, glorification of Allah. Searching for it is is a, is a jihad, a, a, a striving for it. Teaching it to those who do not know it is a charity and delivering it to those worthy of it is an act of drawing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowledge is the reference guide to the allowed and the disallowed, a light on the path for the people of paradise, the companion during loneliness, the friend during estrangement, the converser during seclusion, the guide in times of ease and times of difficulty. So when you are alone, only your Islam will come to you, your Islam will help you. You know the saying that your knowledge, if you get fired, only your knowledge will help you. So if you get fired from a job, you can find another job because you have the knowledge of what you have learned throughout your lifetime. And so is Islam. When you learn, when you have the knowledge of Islam, if something happens to you, the only person that you can look to, the only uh, being that you can look up to is the Creator. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He wants to, will help you. And if He does not help you in this, in this life, then the blessings you will get uh, in, in your hereafter. The, Allah elevates some people by knowledge to the rank of leaders in righteousness who are followed, their actions imitated, and their opinions referred to. The angels long to attend their gatherings of learning knowledge and shade them with their wings. Everything wet or dry, the fish in the sea and its creatures, beasts of prey and cattle that live on land invoke Allah to forgive them. Verily, this is because is the this is because the life of the hearts against ignorance and the lamps of the eyes against the darkness. With knowledge, the slave reaches the ranks of the righteous and the elevated grades in this life and the hereafter. Thinking about knowledge is equivalent to sayam fasting, and studying is equivalent to qiyam praying at night. With, with knowledge, ties of king, kingship are king, kinship are kept, and the allowed and prohibited become distinguished. It is the leader of all actions, it is the imam of all actions, and all actions follow its lead. Only the happy ones are endowed with the knowledge, while the miserable ones are deprived of it. So we can see how important knowledge is, the knowledge of Islam is, because if you do not know the knowledge of Islam, you will of course not know the good from the bad, and of course you will not know what to consume, and what not to consume, what actions to commit, and what actions not to commit. And so it's, when you follow Islam, of course, it brings you into accordance uh, of the rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set for us. So let's ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, to, to help us come into, uh, come into that path, the uh, Salat al-Mustaqim, the straight path, so we can, of course, follow the, the rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set and follow them according to the standards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set. Ibad Allah, inna Allah ya'amuru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhil kurba wa inha'i al fa'ashai wal munkari والبغي يحيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزدكم واستغفروه يغفر لكم واتقوه يجعل لكم من أمركم مخرجا Slaves of Allah, Allah commands justice, the doing of good and liberality to kith and kin, generosity to kith and kin. He forbids all shameful deeds and injustice and rebellion he instructs you that you may remember. Remember Allah the Supreme in glory and He will remember you and be thankful to Him and He will increase you in bounty and seek His forgiveness, He will forgive you. And have taqwa of Him, God-fearing, devoutness and piety, He will make for you a way out of your issues, Hakim al-Salam.